Hey everyone, welcome back to Rally Caps, a podcast for the creative entrepreneur looking to build a business for the long haul. Today, we are pumped to welcome our friend Mike Williams to the show. After finishing his master's degree in 2017, Mike took the leap to go full-time with his photography business alongside his wife, Kristen. In the past three years, he has diversified, diversified their business to cover a wide scope of disciplines, including wedding photography, commercial filmmaking, online virtual tours, podcasting, and most recently, a YouTube channel focused on finance. Despite this volume of responsibilities, Mike has found the time to become his own one-man film lab, perfect his taste as a sommelier, and win the award for (laughs) GQ's Best Dressed Dad of the 21st (laughs) Century. Mike, is that all correct? I would not say so, but yes. (laughs) Uh, That's that's so funny. He corrects you every time you say sommelier. It's not sommelier, it's... It is sommelier. I thought you said it's like wine master. Well, so I'm not going down the sommelier track because I have no interest in the service industry. <laughs> oh, oh. So that's the difference. See, there we go. It's like I, I'm I'm more learning a, a wider range aspects of thing in wine with wine making and uh, distribution and importing and all that stuff. Not the sommelier track, which sommelier is much more it, it is it's a hospitality focused it's a service focused uh, role so anybody who is a wine server and is the one in charge of the wine program at a restaurant or hotel or bar or anything is technically a sommelier whether you're certified or not hmm. correct me if i'm wrong i'm i'm very new into this but that's my understanding so all of that if you're not watching <laughs> this on youtube and you're listening on spotify or anywhere else <laughs> mike and i are in a hot tub right now <laughs> Why are we in a hot tub, Eric? <laughs> we're in a hot tub because we're on our our family vacation that we take every year. Both of our families go out to a place in the middle of nowhere. And that's one of the characteristics we need in a place at Winter Wonderland. That's the vacation name. Uh, but it also the place also needs a hot tub. So we're at Winter Wonderland in the hot tub. That's what's happening. <laughs> Why do we go on a vacation every year, Eric? We go on a vacation every year to take a break from work, spend time with our families, refocus for the year. And then every year so far, there's been a new baby on either side. (laughs) And this is the last year of (laughs) that. The last year of that, probably. (laughs) But this this episode was supposed to be just Steven and I kind of riffing on some stuff for episode... This is five, right? Mm -hmm. Episode five. Yeah. Uh, But... Something kind of magical happened earlier this week, and you sh- do you want to do you want me to just like go into it? Eric, just dive in, man. Okay. Well, Mike and I have been best buds for a while now. Working, we knew po- each other back in college too. Yeah, we we, we met like, each other back in 2012. No, 2011. No, yeah, yeah, 2011. yeah. And um. We both liked photography back then. We thought we knew a lot more than we did. And then we collaborated on some stuff throughout college. But when he decided to move to Chicago with his family back in 2017, after he finished his master's degree, he was asking me about like, like, are we going to be collaborating or like, do you want, do you like, should I, should I come up there? I said, absolutely. Yes. And our studio that we have up in the north side of Chicago already had myself and two other guys. And I said, well, you could be the fourth guy. And so he decided to come up and we started Creative Club Chicago, our little thousand square foot studio in Ravenswood. And that's been four years now, almost Mm -hmm. four years at Creative Club. All that being said, like we've, we've shot all sorts of things together over the years. We've collaborated on all sorts of artistic endeavors and, uh, decided, you know, over the years we had always said we wanted to work together in some capacity. We mm-hmm. just didn't know what that was going to manifest into. And it felt very clear through 2020 of kind of doing a lot of wandering, realizing that we wanted to start this YouTube finance channel. So we did. And the reaction has been a lot more than we expected it to be. <laughs> so tell yeah. us a little bit more about that reception to the new YouTube channel. Yeah, the YouTube channel is called Eric and Mike. Real clever. Because uh, that's Eric and I'm Mike. 
yeah, we thought we had a good idea. Eric's like finance. We love talking finance. We love talking business. Let's do something in that vein. It does really well on YouTube. People are super hungry for that. We have a different perspective than what we think most people. And it's just been crazy. Everybody's like, we posted the video expecting a few hundred views, maybe, you know, like it might take a couple videos for us to finally get like a thousand subscribers. And then so we can work our way towards getting monetized. And yeah, we blew past that and everybody's just been so like wonderfully reception, like receptive of it saying like, this is what they've been needing. They, they can connect to it super well. Like all like, it's just been amazing. I, I didn't expect it to be honest, like that I would be serving and we'd be fitting such a need for people in that space. Yeah. And I originally, we originally started this idea of this channel and we wanted to title it one to 1 million. Mm -hmm. And it was this whole concept that we wanted the whole channel to be dedicated to us turning $1 into a million dollars. And while I think that's a totally genius idea and I think it would be very successful, I did find a YouTube channel that's almost identical to that. Uh, and it's this guy in Florida and he's turning $500 into a million dollars and doing exactly what we talked about. So that was a little disheartening when I found that out. <laughs> but uh, the more we thought about it, we, we kind of realized we didn't want to pigeonhole ourselves into only making content surrounded by this one idea. Mm -hmm. And so we started just brainstorming more on what that could be and we've just decided let's keep mm. it simple we just let's just do our names like the name doesn't really matter when you have people in the financial space named graham stefan who they think it's steven or stepan or like andre jick they can't uh, just say his name yeah. like i came to the realization that, like the name doesn't really matter as long as the content delivers as long as we're doing the thing it should be good so why did our content deliver so much on this first video I'm still trying to figure that out too. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I've been doing YouTube for about three years now. So an expert and as all experts are for three years, <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he, I'm joking. I'm joking. He knows, a, he knows a ton. He knows a ton. And in, in the, well, what's funny in the, the realm of YouTube, especially in the algorithmic YouTube that we know that is a lot of years and it's always changing. Yeah. But at this point, at the time we launched this channel, my 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 personal channel was about a little over 80,000 subscribers and a pretty dedicated fan base on the channel. And I'd been hinting for a while that I wanted to start another finance channel, start making more content about finance, about creative entrepreneurship. And uh, when I, I, I decided to make a video about how much money I made in 2020, which I know those videos do really well, uh, but we kind of just like went all out and making that video look really good, uh, making sure I broke down all the numbers. Uh, and I don't know, we're three days in. It's now, it's right. Wednesday. We posted these videos on Monday. Mm -hmm. it, is the, it is the analytically the most views I've ever gotten on a video on my channel ever in the mm -hmm. first couple of days, my personal video. And at the end of it, I talked about doing a $500 giveaway for the new channel. So, hey, go on over to our new channel where we're talking about finance. There's going to be a $500 giveaway. I uh, talked about the one-to-one -one million idea, which we still want to do on the channel. But then I was like, you know what? Just go over there and you'll see everything. And so they, they're they led to this video on our channel that is also just very, very beautiful. We shot it uh, like all out with studio lighting and we wore suits and we're joking and we teleprompted <laughs> the entire script and all that jazz. And we were just as transparent with the numbers as I was in my personal video. Mm -hmm. We talked about how much money we made over the past three years and kind of what Mike hinted at was we want this different approach in the financial space on this platform to talk about how a, lo a lot of people only want to talk about their gross revenue and not the net revenue after expenses and in, incorporating taxes and like the real parts of business. Mm -hmm. So we, we talked about that. We talked about the difference of gross and net revenue and gave a little bit of a lesson in there and then just dropped like all the things we want to do on the channel, like the one to one million idea. Um, help me out. I'm blinking. One to one, <laughs> yeah, one to one million yeah, idea. One to one million flipping stuff, real estate, me possibly opening up a winery, credit um, cards, credit card using credit cards to 
to maximize startup bonuses on those, not be in credit card debt. If you and have I think, any credit card debt, don't do it. I think I think the majority of people that came over to view it from my personal channel are creative type folks since my channel is dedicated to photo and video. And I think there's a huge gap in the creative world when it comes to finance. And so them seeing someone like them start talking about finance in a way that they were hungry for, uh, they were really excited. And a lot of comments said that. Yeah. And then the added bonus of potentially being in a $500 gift card giveaway mm -hmm. was just the cherry on top. So yeah, we're now two, two and a half days into it since posting that first video. It's got like 5,500 views. We're approaching 3,000 subscribers yeah, already. Yep. It, well, like we just feel overwhelmed, honestly, with the response. The fact that like we're now looking at whole, holy crap, like we might be monetized by the end of the month if we play our cards right. Uh, it, we now feel like the world is at our fingertips creatively and business wise, which is <laughs> arguably like the most excited we've ever felt in our in our careers <laughs> yeah so therefore let's celebrate yeah <laughs> yeah champagne it is okay are those chilled glasses no, no it's they're just fog from the <laughs> they're just foggy. Foggy. oh <laughs> hey that cork just went on the roof it, sorry I'm the people that are just listening to this are missing out. out on a whole lot this episode cheers <laughs> cheers steven cheers 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 it's got like a nice Nice oaky approach, like a lingering cherry blossom. What do we have planned for what's going to happen the rest of the month? Oh, the rest of the month? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. It's just going to be crazy. This month's crazy. We we had started booking out this month, and I feel like this happens every year. Everybody creatively, like in terms of client-wise, slows down come November, December because of the holidays and their budgets run out. And I do a lot of corporate like work. But then all of a sudden the new year hits and it's like, boom, they're there. They're ready to go. So we're here. We're at the cabin. I'm like, cool. We're going to chill. We got this. And I'm like, I have these clients that are like wanting all this, this, that, and this. Literally we get back on Sunday. I'm heading down to Arizona to for a shoot on the Tuesday. So we're heading down Monday. And I was like, yo, Eric, you want to come with 150 buck round trip tickets? Let's go. Like, let's make content down there. We'll stay an extra night. Everything's already pretty much paid for our food and stay and our rental car by my client. Let's go down. Well, not the extra day, obviously. I have to pay for that. Ethics. But so we're literally, we're going down to Arizona together to just start filming stock footage, make another YouTube video, do some film diaries, shoot film, get, basically start building our print shop for our oh we're probably going to build a print shop and start doing prints and trying to connect with uh interior designers and those types of people to do prints so that's arizona and then a week after that we're heading to detroit uh to, uh, to again we're trying to do more work together so i had another client reach out he's a knee surgeon or something does knee mm. replacements or some really rad guy actually he's, it's just been really pleasant like experience i've done some stuff in the medical industry that hasn't <laughs> but this has this has been um and i was like eric me and you we're just gonna crush this build some sick portfolio stuff boom i have because my credit cards blah 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 i have a free night stay because we're spending three nights we get the fourth night free because of a credit card that i have because of rewards and stuff so we're staying in detroit doing the same thing as arizona shooting content shooting youtube videos uh shooting film that's that then hopefully a coffee client like that's going to yep. reach out we're going to do some stuff with that hopefully when you're in town actually um and so that's client work but like intermixed all that client work is stuff we're going to do on top well of that's that. what's so exciting about the new channel yeah. and doing youtube especially with two different youtube channels now is that we can monetize any trip that mm -hmm. we do he brought up that he's going to phoenix right after the cabin i'm like yeah and i said i yeah, why don't I come with? I mean, if we get footage and photos in that landscape, that's that's super interesting. You know, like that's way more interesting than flat Illinois. And so we could diversify what the imagery looks like. We could plan about what we're going to shoot. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have our channel launched now, we can 
we just have ideas now like, okay, we can go sit in the desert and do a talking head. And that's really, really interesting. And it could just be a t- mm-hmm. about a topic we were already planning it's on. It's like, who's these guys from Chicago sitting down in the middle of the desert telling yeah. us about <laughs> X, Y, and Z? But that's what I love about this stuff. It, like, it's fascinating. All of this, like building a channel like this, it becomes so meta. And yeah. then we do stuff on your video, right. on your channel of like, how did we shoot this? Shoot it. Why did a we get BTS. out there? Yeah. So you start leveraging all the things that you're already doing with your business to then become YouTube content, which then in turn grows that brand, pays you an ad revenue, affiliate marketing, eventually sponsorships, selling digital assets mm-hmm. to subscribers. Like the list is endless. Um, and I've already seen it once with the growth of my own personal channel. And I know like the reason why we wanted to go to finance route, like I I know that that does very, very well on YouTube. I'm not. We're not going to shy away from saying that. Mm-hmm. We're not going to try to be like, oh, no, it's only because we're interested in it. Of course we're interested yeah, in it. We talked about it no matter what. But, but ad revenue mm-hmm. pays, it's the highest paying form of content on YouTube as far as what YouTube mm-hmm. is going to pay you. So then we, you know, the Detroit trip is, you know, we could shoot a film diaries episode. We've been doing this, um, this, episodic series on my channel of, of shooting film photography that's been really interesting for people like we could do that there we're having a studio mate come along with us for that one to help assist with the commercial work and shooting more youtube behind the scenes and helping us edit and all that good stuff and then yeah then we could talk about the credit card benefits of opening up a new credit card and getting points and then leveraging that even more to make more content like it mm-hmm. it just never ends it's so exciting like it's yeah. so exciting to now have these vehicles with which we can do whatever the heck we want Mm -hmm. we can we can build whatever business we want and record behind the scenes of the whole process and that that process is monetized so it it feels like the 2021 the 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 new decade the new the new era of crowdfunding almost right Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. we no longer have to go to a GoFundMe, not a GoFundMe, but a um indigo an an, an indigo go or kickstarter gosh um, you could tell I'm not a traditional businessman, uh, but, <laughs> but leveraging leveraging something like a YouTube channel that can be monetized and selling digital assets and having a group of people support your endeavors is like mm-hmm. now we don't have to ask anyone. They're just excited to be a part of it, which is mm-hmm. insane to me. So we started a financial channel. How is that different than my own personal creative like photo video channel? And like what kind of audience is going to be engaging with that. Totally. Well, yeah, I think I think any niches do really well. Yes, on YouTube for sure. Like very well. And so as a photography niche, that does really well. But there are also only so many people that are photographers or interested in photography. Whereas, I don't know if this is where you wanted me to go, but this is yeah. where I'm going. Whereas when you talk about making money and how to make money, no matter what your career or industry is, anybody is interested. And we could just make any type of content we want and just talk about how we made money doing it. And Literally. It feels like what's so approachable in this, the way we're doing it. I look at finance channels like Graham Stephan or Andre Jick or Nate O'Brien and they're kind of coming off of this career that's unattainable for a lot of people. You know, mm. I went to college for four years. I got this degree. I had this salary paying job. I got my real estate license. He was also started, top of his class, incredibly yeah. book smart, mm. blah, blah, blah. I started, I started doing real estate in Los Angeles. I broke it big. I got this million dollar house sale. It got my career started. I started just hustling hard in real estate. People see those stories and they're just like, I can't do that i mean like i have to put in the time and the money to invest in an education or a degree or um, a certificate or a license whereas i think they're going to look at us and see wow they did they did a creative thing they taught themselves how to photograph people and photograph things and film stuff and use audio and they did it all on just learning from youtube Mm -hmm. and so that's an approachable base to build off of and that can be done in a bunch of different disciplines that could be done in writing. It could be done in um, design. It could be done in, in drawing mm-hmm. and animation and all sorts of creative fields. And then on top of it, like all of those people who feel like they can do that as a career. Also, I, I personally feel like are yearning for help with how to manage those finances. Whether it be mm-hmm. like, how do I, how do I build a spreadsheet 
Um, how do I run, you know, right. QuickBooks and a profit loss? And how much can I? How much money can I actually make? Yes. Like that's a question I always asked myself. Totally. Even seeing other people like, find, f- seeing them be successful, right. I had no idea what was even possible. Mm-hmm. And for me, I find a ton of inspiration from the Binance YouTubers because I see the kind of money that they do make, and then I go, okay, we could make that kind of money because our production is actually so much better. Like, mm-hmm. not to knock them or anything, but like this is our full-time job like well, yeah we it's already built in right we know video we know audio we know how to edit and so now we've felt the encouragement to double down on content on my own personal channel start the new youtube channel start rally caps and start collaborating because even steven wants to come out whoa that came out like <laughs> trial above even steven's <laughs> What? <laughs> it came out of my mouth and I was just like, oh, I watched that show as a kid. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> tangent. Yeah, even now we're like, you, Steven, you and your wife Laura are coming out next month and are going to collaborate with us on some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you, if you guys don't know, Steven is an associate photographer under my wedding photography brand. Like all of it is intermingled. And Mike and I have been even having this discussion about you, Steven, about how you cover even more mm-hmm. gaps than we even have. Right. Because we Steve, don't fill in all, all, all the gaps. Like we were looking at Steven's yeah. YouTube channel today and we were looking at his uh, his writing capability and his ability to tell a story. His intentionality. And, yeah, yeah. And like, um, you know, the, I forget the director's name, but the one that does Shaun of the Dead and, you know, Scott Pilgrim versus mm-hmm. the World, like that video you made about yeah. that, we're just like the pacing, the pacing of this. Like we, we're so focused on the content sometimes that we don't dive deep enough and aren't heady or cerebral enough to break it down the way you do. And so then when we start talking about bringing Steven into the equation for some of the stuff that we make and we do, it gets us even more excited because we're like, holy crap, what if Steven wrote the script for this? Holy crap, what if Steven did the visuals for this? Like it would be even more next level. And this is something that I personally would not have felt Three years ago. I think three years ago I would have been... Three years ago you literally said, Mike, don't give me ideas because it doesn't make it seem like it's my Mine. idea. So therefore I don't like putting it it's out not, into the world yeah. because it's not me. And yeah. I feel inauthentic doing that. Right. Hmm. Which was, is like... I was like, okay. That's arrogant. That's really weird. I... Okay. Yeah. And I didn't feel like it was arrogance arrogance at the time, but looking back on it and seeing how, how much better it is on the other side, like bringing community into the equation. There's so much bigger things. There's, there's no, there's no question why Hollywood films are better because you have a team of a a multitude of, of professionals perfecting their craft Mm -hmm. on very specific things. And so for you to think that you can only be successful by being, you know, a one person machine I think so many people are doing themselves yes. a disservice mm. by thinking that way. And so Completely. a lesson I needed to learn through trial and error and experience by softening myself and letting Mike kind of speak into to doing the things that I didn't want to do and helping with that. Eric doesn't really like wine, so I got him a really nice whiskey. He's got some whiskey. <laughs> got some water on that Sure SM7B. Oh, man. How fancy this is. You see this? It's a $400, $400 microphone that got wet. <laughs> I thought you were going to say there was a $400 whiskey that got wet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I hope that bottle isn't $400, Mike. Wow. It's not. Okay. That looks awesome, oh, though. Wow. wow, that's a lot of whiskey. No, it's not. Okay, it's not. It's like two and a half ounces. Okay. All that to say, team is better and people fill in each other's gaps. Like, I couldn't do what I have done in my business without my wife. And I never imagined making more than six figure, six figures a year. Like doing the hundred thousand dollar income every year. Right. And now I'm seeing what we've built and I'm like, holy crap, we yeah. could do seven, seven figures, figures yeah. this year. Mm-hmm. Like we have the scope and the capability right. to two companies, bring yeah. value to people's lives and at the same time ten times in our income. Like right. and why does that matter? Like yeah. seven figures is a thing people are like, Oh, right. I want to make a million dollars. It doesn't matter, no. but here's why it matters. Go. We talked about it earlier. Because just, he, Eric's better spoken than me, so he talks a lot, and he writes the scripts. I, I, 
<laughs> I speak on behalf of Mike's thoughts. And but we, yeah, I jump in. I jump in when I need to. Covering each other's weaknesses. So the whole seven figure idea and creating more income for yourself is that you can bring more people into the equation. You can fill in. You can fill in jobs. You can give people work who right. need it, and you could start like blessing other people in their lives and like seeing them successful and seeing f- like fruit come out of their lives and see them um, like engage in what their dreams are instead you know like co- especially coming out of a year like 2020 right. and feeling so many people like we see that we see that even in you Stephen like you had just we already talked about this on another maybe it was the first podcast episode we had to scratch but um, it was that it one. was yeah yeah <laughs> But what we said was like you had just started your wedding photography business right before the pandemic hit and you didn't have your business diversified. And so like people like you probably felt the most discouraged going into that because of not having any work and needing and being forced into diversification right away. Even though it takes most people three to five years to find that diversification, you had to do it in a few months. And it, like the amount of stress and depression you would feel in that circumstance we see this situation of like seeing people in those kinds of, of, of situations in their own career and being able to, you know, reach out our hand and be like, we want to bring you on board with the skill set you have and we want to see you thrive in a position here to do that kind of thing. It's like, it's just outside of ourselves. It gives us the opportunity to then be like, to give back to community. We on the channel, we want to be doing giveaways like every single month. We right. want to be doing just like money giveaways and then following up on those stories. What do you want to do with this money? Are you going to pay off debt? Are you going to be investing it? Are you going to be putting money into your business and buying gear and like anything else that you need as, as overhead? Like the possibilities are endless of just being able to be generous then. Um, and like, of course, you know, providing for our families. And we even talked about this too right. today. Like, I'm personally going to feel really guilty when my parents, I think when my parents pass and I have an inheritance, it's, I feel like it's going to be really hard for me to take that money because I'm so business minded and driven with to like make my own money. It's not going to feel fair to me to take like everything that they've earned and gained. But Mike pushed back on that Mm. and said like, that's, that's such a blessing you can give to your kids to be able to see them thrive in the same way. Right. Basically I was like, don't you want that for your kids? Right. Exactly. <laughs> we see our parents very different than we see our kids. Totally. But our parents see, see our, us, as us kids. like we see our kids. Totally. Yeah. But I even want to take that a step farther and say, like, anybody that we employ or bring into our fold, I want to see them as family as well. You know, I want to see them thrive in the same way that I like. Obviously, my family is going to come first. But I want to see I want to see people mm-hmm. that we employ thrive in that same way too. That we are giving work to thrive in that yeah. way as well. And so it's just so exciting to like see what an empire of building business could be, but not in a selfish way, right. but being able to build it alongside right. with other people and not just have this one thing that we only run by ourselves and we only do the things the way we do because that's how we do them. But building an empire of people and community to like all lift each other up mm-hmm. in our process. That's a hot take for this episode. <laughs> and we said we, and talking about meta Obviously, we record every Rally Caps episode, but we're like, these clips for sure, like as our channel grows, are going to be really cool to look back on, yep. even though we're shirtless when, and I'm in my underwear. And when you're in this hot tub with us. <laughs> you're talking Man, to Steve, not the crowd. Oh, <laughs> and the crowd is our family. <laughs> I want everybody in this hot tub. That <laughs> metaphor has gone way too far. Steven on my lap. Oh my, stop. Nope, it's it's just starting. It's just starting. Nope. <laughs> just cut that on post. <laughs> Do I get it? Am I like in with how I say that? You did it, man. That's that perfect? perfect. Is that yeah. like an inside joke? Inside joke. I've always wanted to be a part of one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> anyway, like, I don't know. Steven, I don't know if you have any other questions for us or anything. I'm sorry I hugged. I know I hugged the mic a lot on this one. Um, we're We're unbelievably excited for what this what this can be and what it is already, what we've started to build. Yeah. And even for me personally in the season, like starting Rally Caps, yeah. starting Eric and Mike, continuing to grow my own personal channel, still doing my photo and video business. Like it is all these things that I dreamed. Honestly, I dreamed that 2020 would be this. And I had, I had no idea that it would be as good as what we have made it to be 
with coming up with rally caps and coming up with Eric and Mike and seeing the success of, of what they are already mm-hmm. is just like, it makes me feel overwhelmed emotionally, honestly. Yeah. And don't cry. We're in a hot tub together. Shirtless. Oh and that's gosh. weird. It makes me very excited about what's yeah. to come in the decades to come. Yeah. 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 Same. It's a, it's a pretty surreal feeling to be able to build so many quality things out of nothing alongside your friends. Uh, that's such a privilege to be able to do something like that to the scope of what the three of us are doing with these projects that we're working on. And it, I, yeah. I'm so incredibly excited for everything that we'll be up to for the, the remainder of this year and the years to come. Uh, and one question I kind of wanted to maybe end this with just to get people even more excited about what the two of you are up to specifically is could you just kind of like tease out maybe one idea or one specific video that you plan on, on making on the Eric and Mike channel in the upcoming maybe month or so? Let's give them two. You clearly have two in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, <laughs> let's, um, I'm going to take one to 1 million. You take, uh, the month of February. Great. Uh, so one to one million, like we said, is going to be taking one dollar and turning it into a million dollars. We had this idea over the summer, so we actually filmed the first episode, at least the first part of it. Mm. And all it was was we had the idea in the studio. We'd been jamming on it for a while, and we went out to the alley uh, by the studio, and we started digging through the alleys. Like, let's see if anybody threw anything out that was actually valuable. By digging, we mean like leaving sit no, out. We not weren't like digging, digging through, through dumpsters. <laughs> so like we were just checking to see because sometimes people just leave things on the outside of the dumpster, outside of the recycling bin. Because they know, like, this is actually, this has value. If people are going right. through, they might they want to grab it. They just want to deal with bringing it to the donation. And so they yeah. see this on Craigslist. Yeah. You see this on Craigslist, too, in Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. They're like, free thing. It's sitting on top of my my trash can in the alley at this address. So we were just scoping the neighborhood, and we found, like, five different things that could totally resell. Hmm. And it was a matter of 45 minutes. Yeah. An hour of walking around in the alleys. It was literally the alleys just by the studio. We got so busy with other work, we didn't end up finishing the video, but we want to pick it up from where we left off in the summer, and we want to try to sell that stuff on eBay or Facebook Marketplace and see if we can just like make, I don't know, Well, we say we say one to a million, one to one million, Mm -hmm. but really we want to show that it could be zero to one million, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. sound as good. Zero to a million doesn't sound as good as one to one million. So we're like, we're actually going to start with the dollars we get from the money we got from literally just walking the alleys. But then start investing that money in different Correct. ways and like just pouring it back into the project. Right. And so eventually we can use that money to like buy a pickup truck or a sprinter van. And right. then that's the vehicle we use to pick up other things. Right. And then we start picking up free things off Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. and Or we go to um, auctions and buy items and try to resell them and have a storage unit. And, and then that eventually turns into real estate and we buy properties and start renting right. them out or utilizing them in commercial ways a million ideas on that project and yep. that's one of those things that like if we do it the right way we could get one to one million in like a year or two which is mind-blowing mm. to me but that's like that's the possibility of being able to start something like that if you do it right mm-hmm. the other idea is in the month of february yeah, in the month of february uh, we're going to spend as a family both of our families as little as possible so we're going to basically tally up. I don't Is there like a catchy name for that yet? Or no? All right. Catchy name. Ready, set, go. February is for people who don't want to spend money. <laughs> February, no money berry. <laughs> These are terrible names. <laughs> I'm really creative. Frugal <laughs> February. <laughs> oh, Ooh. what the heck? Steven just comes up with it right away. This is like what we're talking about. What the heck? This is what he we're talking about. He just immediately like... This is a prime example of why Steven needs to be in our lives. <laughs> that is literally going to be the title of the video. It is. How could it not be? <laughs> like frugal February something. Like that's amazing. Okay, that's it. There it is. Okay, go for it. So we're gonna take Yeah. So we're we're basically averaging averaging out our spending for a year, two a year, years. A year and a half. Yeah. Cause honestly this last year's weird, but maybe yeah. the year last two years or something, averaging out our spending per month and going, Great, that's what we spent. 
in February, we are literally going to try and spend as little money, money as possible. So we're not going out to eat. We're not buying the fancy food from the store we want. We're just buying like the minimums. We're going to try and eat from our pantry, like eat out our pantry and our freezer as yeah. much as possible. Um, we're going to hold off on buying gear because if you can hold off one month, maybe you can hold off two months. Mm-hmm. Like it's this whole idea of, of going great. We're used to spending this great then what did we what's the difference between our average and what we spent in february Hmm. okay clearly we don't need to spend a maybe it's not c but maybe it's somewhere in b Hmm. you know of what we need to spend so therefore what what are the other amounts that we could be investing dumping at debt buying uh like saving to buy a house saving to put towards what are you doing stocks what are you doing? Oh no, our wives are insta storying us. Oh my gosh. This is very embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know why it's embarrassing. We're putting this on the internet. <laughs> We're proud of this. You're are you doing this? Are you Instagram live? We look naked. I'm in my underwear. Come over here. Say hi to Steven. <laughs> hi Kristen. Hi Sabria. You didn't hear. He says hi. You got you have to at least come into the video so they can see. <laughs> that's my that's my little baby. That's a new baby. Yeah. Oh Watch my it gosh. on YouTube so you can see the new little baby Bella. This I don't is know amazing. if the mic could hear that, but my wife said we would just wanted to come out here and see how weird this looked. There's everything we could have thought and more. <laughs> Back to uh Frugal February. So yeah, we have the one to one million. Uh, first episode and we have frugal february the, so the first episode we're actually going to take that stuff that we already curated <laughs> one of the items is a bedpan <laughs> it was literally a pristine bedpan like, double bagged in double a plastic bagged. bag it's perfect it was never used they go on amazon oh, for like 45 dollars. so we're gonna try and sell one so you sell it for like 20 or 25 or 10 or go. 5 yeah any money is money. Is money because we have zero in that account right. called uh, one to one million. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And then, yeah, even more so on the frugal February point. Uh, yeah, I think even in investing, like for me, since we talked about we're gonna we're gonna talk about Mike's debt journey. He's right. probably gonna dump all of the extra money they make that month mm. just on his debt, yep. which he has thirty thousand of between student and car. Mm. Um, and then for me, we only have our mortgage, which I just want to pay consistently every month. So the difference for me will probably just be invested in stocks, dividend yielding stocks or something like that. And so talking about extras, you know, yeah. what do you do with your extras and how do you get extras? Yeah. And so just proving a point that like if you trim the fat on your budget, you can make some extra money and then you can do with it what you need uh, based on your situation. Yeah. And maybe you need to do a few yeah. frugal February in the next yeah. month, you know. Yep. And go, great, yep. that's how little we can spend. What did we cut out that we actually don't need to add back yeah. in? Right. So yep. very very exciting stuff. And, and a multitude of different things. We just have endless ideas of what we want to put on that channel. I'm also really interested to hear, this is, this is episode five. I'm so interested to listen back to this when it goes live oh. and what Eric and Mike is then. You know, and we'll check in then. It's just so mm-hmm. fun to see that when you put content up online, like the time capsule that it is. It is, and what you can look back on and what it is. Yeah. Today, somebody uh, commented about the video I made two and a half years about two and a half years ago about um, making a hundred thousand dollars a year um, as a wedding photographer. And in his comment, mm. he literally said, "Like I watched that video, got inspired, and now I make two hundred thousand dollars a year as a wedding and portrait photographer." And it was like. The time capsule of what that is, is just, it's so cool to see. Again, that goes back to, I could go on forever about all of this, but like it goes, it goes back to like bringing value to people's lives and like seeing what that time capsule can do mm-hmm. and what you're putting out into the world to like add benefit um, and value to people's lives. It's, it's just, it's nothing but exciting. Well, hey, if you guys are interested in listening along and watching everything that Mike and Eric are going to be accomplishing on their new YouTube channel, Eric and Mike, check them out on YouTube at Eric and Mike. And check out Eric on his YouTube channel, Eric Floberg. Check out Mike on everywhere. You got Life Inspired Film. You got Michael and Kristen. There are so many places you can check out the incredible work that he is doing. But that is it for us on this episode of Rally Caps. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you in the next episode. No, that's not. We're not going to end it there. I, I was just about to because say no? that's we need where to you're plug, me. We need that's, to plug that's it? Steven. We need to plug Steven. There's a ton of things. We no. missed like five other things we need to talk about. No, that was the cleanest no. outro I've ever done.
<laughs> and I'm ruining it because you guys need to it go was perfect. look. You can cut it there, but add this before it. You need to go check out okay. Steven's YouTube channel. Yes, please. Because it's incredible. His content is incredible and underrated, and his gonna... intentionality is amazing, and it's in the show notes. Whether he likes it or not, he's going to add it. <laughs> um, and you need to go check out Steven's work on his own personal channel as well. Dude, his last video he put out about one hour watch, a day. Yeah, He's watch like, hours and dude, watch time on your phone. Unreal. That made me. That made me think. It's for real. So good. Should we do the outro together? So good. Yeah, let's try to do it at yeah. the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's all talk at the same time, all three of us. Okay, ready? Yeah. Set. Go and thank thanks you for, for listening watching. to an episode uh, love you for of Rally Cast. Thanks for watching. It's amazing. Rally yeah, um, make sure love to you. follow Text you on his YouTube channel, Eric on his. And if you want to follow me, um, <laughs> should follow me. If you're the last one talking, maybe they will listen to you. Life inspired film. Um, a lot more to come from there. So. <laughs> That's such a good ending. Dude.